Number one, you have to become a master at something. Okay. Right. Um, a lot of people are a uh, mile wide and an inch deep in what they do. We need to be an inch wide and a mile deep. So I think you need to become a master or an expert in something. Mm. If once you do that, you're able to monetize you, which is to sell your information for a high multiple. Like that, the, the one of the best things that anybody can ever do. I call it the three E model. You need to first um, get experience doing what you're doing. You need to first, then you need to become an expert, and that's an expert to you and expert to others around you. Hey, uh, hold on, say that one more time. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of people that self, yeah. they're self-proclaimed experts. A absolutely. So you want to get experience first. Then you want to become an expert, not just to you, but to those around you. You want to be seen as an expert, and that comes with putting in work. Mm -hmm. That comes with staying loyal to that one thing and not rebranding. Yep. Right. Become a <laughs> become an expert, and then once you become an expert, you can now educate. Once you start educating people on how to do what you do or how to become who you are, that's where you can start making a lot of money fast. I love it. Yeah. When we, I need to talk, I need to, I need that. Cause that was good. <laughs> that was good. I'm holding that in my back like pocket. That, that yeah, was good. That was strong. Good. Number um, two, we're, we're just talking about making money. The top five uh, things to consider when making money. A lot of it. Yeah, a lot of it. Um, the first thing is we need to look at how college well, number two. Second, yeah. second, second, second two. Thing. Okay, yes. cool. So number <laughs> two is we need to look at how colleges has done us. Mm -hmm. So if we would spend four years of our life and go to a financial institution and give them, let's just say a hundred thousand dollars, then why wouldn't we invest a hundred thousand dollars into ourselves? Mm -hmm. So we need to think about getting a mentor. If you want to make a lot of money and maybe fast, like not a little bit of money over a long period of time. We spent a lot of money in a short period of time. If that's your aspiration, then you need to think about looking look at, look at, at mentorship like college. So as opposed to going and spending four years at a university mm -hmm. and giving them 100,000, yep. why don't you go and find a what I would call entrepreneur, entrepreneur educator, and you give them, let's just call it 10,000, mm -hmm. and give them a year of your time. And they will teach you more in that year for that 10,000 than you would have gotten from a institution, from a college professor who's probably making 40000 a year. Mm. Like, why would I try to learn something from somebody who I don't want to be like? Mm. Can I expand on that right quick? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we were taught to go to school and spend $100,000 to go learn from somebody who is not doing what we want to do or who's not being who we want to be. See? We can't write that off on our taxes. We get a small deduction for tuition. <laughs> we, get a, we get a small deduction for tuition. We get deduction for student loan interest up to $1,500. Yeah. Yeah. Or... I can go pay a millionaire like Shan. Talk. I can go pay a billionaire like Grant Cardone. Talk. And I can pay them directly and get a 100% tax deduction for every single dollar that mm. I pay them. Because as a business owner, education is tax deductible. So you're getting rewarded. You're getting, you're getting a tax deduction to learn how to make more money from somebody who's proven to do it. And they, they have the receipts. They have the social proof. So that's why like people like mentors is a scam or a course. No, you already been scammed. You already been put in a system <laughs> yeah, that made sure. you spend four years, spend a yeah. hundred thousand dollars to come out making 40 K. So now we have to revamp our minds. I just want to expand. You, you're that's not going to talk spicy like that on me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Hold on. So, so here's the even be better part with the concepts that I teach, because I teach you how to obtain a 700 credit score and get 100K in credit in less than 100 days. So then why don't you take the 100K that I showed you how to get and leverage your credit and monetize the entire situation? So if I show you how to go to these banks and these financial institutions to get $100,000 or $50,000, why wouldn't you then take that money, invest it into the mentor, like we saying, mm -hmm. and then run up the bag and then pay the bank back? It's the same concept of when we go get a house, we don't get them $500 or $1 million. We say, hey, listen, I'm going to pay you back over time. When we go get our car, we don't give them all the money. We say, hey, I'm going to probably give you a little bit down if I do. If I got good credit, I don't got to give you nothing, but I'm going to pay you back over time. Same thing with your education. Yeah. Why don't you just go get the money from the bank and pay the entrepreneurial educator and pay the bank back over time? Give yourself some time. Because most people say, well, I ain't got no money. I ain't, I ain't got 20000 to invest into your mentorship program. I ain't got 55000 to give you for your mentorship program. Yes, you do. You get your credit repaired. And you go to the bank and you get that line of credit and you give that to your mentor. And then you go run the plays and you go run up a bag and pay mm. the bank back the money. Well said. Number one was become uh, an expert. Become an expert. Number two, you're saying invest. In, invest in the mentor. Give me number three. Um, number three is to um get actually let me do number three. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I got number three. Perfect. I got number three. You <laughs> ready? Number three step <laughs> on making a lot of money is asking people for the money. Mm -hmm. You gotta ask them for the money. 
Mm. I'm not talking about GoFundMe. <laughs> I'm talking about you have to actually go to someone and say, I have a product or service. Would you like to buy it? Mm. Or you make a video that's selling someone on buying it. You got to ask, bro, the number one thing I I see the mistake that entrepreneurs make is they don't ask anybody for the money. Yeah. They'll actually make a video on, yo, I got this t-shirt brand. Look, it says consistency. This is what you need. Yeah. And then the video's over. <laughs> They're not willing to go in the streets and say, hey, would you like to buy this? Or they'll, I, bro, I remember being in the mall and people come to the kiosk and I give them a whole t tour about, you know, this is what the Sleep is for Suckers brand is about. These t-shirts are dope. Like, look at the quality, material, colors, goes with your shoes, you'll like it. And they'll be like, oh, yo, you got a website? And that was the sign <laughs> Ooh. that told me they're about to leave. <laughs> like, yo, this is dope. You got a website or something? Yeah. Bro, why do you need a website? We well, can just buy it right here, right? But the crazy thing is, I'd be like, oh, yeah, we got a website, man. Yeah, follow me on Instagram, man. And they'd be like, yo, yeah, I'm going to check you out. I'm going to buy some later. And they leave. And you know what I fail to do? Ask them for some money. Just, I never asked them for the money. So I, 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 I had this rule where you got to tell me no three times. So mm. they'll be like, oh, you got a website? I'm like, yeah, we do, but you should just buy it now. Would you like to buy it? One, would you like to buy this shirt right now? They'll be like, no, nah, I'm going to check it out later. And I'll say, yo, hold on real quick. Let me ask you one more question. Would you like to buy the shirt now? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny, bro, mm. but you would not. Met, like you wouldn't believe how many people I converted on the second or third no, yep. just asking people for the money. Yep. Wow. Ask them, make some offers, do a pitch, mm. ask somebody for some money. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with number three. You've got to ask more people for money. The, mm. the offer you don't make is the offer, offer they, they can't, can't take. take. Dang. That part. That's number three. You're on number four. Let's do it. Woo. Okay, that, that's, that's good stuff right there. I, I think number four to making a lot of money. Um, is I don't know if this counts as number three, but like make it easy to pay you. Like I feel like so many people, oh, that's good. like no, so many people yeah. like don't make it easy to pay them. Like I have every payment process. How how you want to pay me? <laughs> Why a credit card? Deposit? Like let me know, right? And then like make it easy to pay them. I, I see so many businesses like when it comes to pay them. Oh, I don't have that set up. Like, oh, you gotta do this. You gotta go. Like mm. you making it hard. You made the sale. Now you're making it hard to pay you. Mm. That's crazy to me, yep. right? So I think that as business owners, we have to do everything within our power to make it easy for the person to pay them while they're hot. Because once they go home and they, they settle down, they're not thinking about you no more, right? So I think that if you, if you find ways or avenues to make it easy to pay you, whether it's payment plans or whatever, make it easy to pay you and then more people will pay you more often. So that's the psychology you're saying behind, like if you have like a $30,000 offer, yeah. You could ask for the thirty thousand yeah. right now, yeah. Or you can make it easy by what you say. You said like a payment plan, yeah, payment like plan or a deposit. We can do the rest, but I think that um, we have to make it as easy for people to pay us as possible, and then we have to. This is good. We have to believe that what we're selling is worth it. Mm. Greg Cardone has a quote in his one of his books. It says, "The first sale you have to make is you." If you're not sold on your product or you're not sold on your service, it's impossible to sell somebody else. Mm -hmm. So the first and biggest sale you have to make is you. So I think we have to be sold on our product. I know you're sold on a podcast. I know you're sold on the morning meetup. I know you're sold on the morning meetup. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? And people sense that. <clears throat> and if you're, if you're sold, it makes it so much more easy to sell. Dang, okay. Yeah, that was like 4 and 4.5. So 4 would be <laughs> make it easy to pay you. Yeah. And then 4.5 is you got to believe that you're worth the money. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, give me five. For me, it would be, I think a lot of people don't make the money that they want to make because they're not aiming big enough. Mm -hmm. so, mm, I like that. Okay. Yeah. It's talking good. Explain it's, that. It's kind of like, for me, I think my first four or five about five or six years of entrepreneurship, I just kept talking about I wanted to make 100K. I just want to make six figures. That was it. And I was cool with it. And I made it and I hit it. It wasn't, I, I didn't start making seven figures until I, the moment that I said, I'm going out to seven figures. That's mm. all it took was just a decision. That's crazy. <laughs> all I had to do was just make just one decision to say, I'm going for it. And I hit it. So the reality is that a lot of us, we're hitting targets because they're too low. We need to aim high. Like mm. a lot of people around me are, Maybe they, maybe they don't know it. I know it because I understand how this thing called life works. 
But a lot of people around me are starting to now make more money just by being around me. And the reason that they're making more money is because I'm stretching them. I'm making them think big. Yeah. So they're like, okay, they cool with their job making 40, 50, and then they running their side business, maybe making another 40, 50. So they cool at 100. But, I, but like, if you get on the phone with me and I'm telling you that I'm constantly doing about 100 to $200,000 a month, you get, to, you get to saying, wait a minute, okay, how can I, how can I get where he's at? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm thinking big. And then if I get on the phone with Carter and Carter gives me his gigantuan numbers and then I talk to you and then you say <laughs> something even crazier, I'm like, okay, yo, I need to think bigger. Because if they can do it, then I can do it. And then I'm, like, I'm, I was in a group text the other day and I'm like, okay, so this guy just put up, he did 1.7 million this month. I'm like, all right, cool. I got to get it together. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, because I, I got to get it, it together. I saw that gave me a headache. What's I'm like, all right, right bro. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me to post my little 200. It's not going to, yeah. 200K for the month. He's like, all right, get it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, and then so I met this and I'm like, hey, bro, congrats. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, you know, yeah, I'm like, oh, you going crazy. Seven figure. He's like, no, nah, bro, actually it's eight figures in here. <laughs> And I'm like, yo, you going crazy, crazy. He's like, no, but cra- congrats to you, bro. You going crazy, seven figures. I'm not going crazy. No, don't do me like that. <laughs> like, you going crazy. Like, eight figures, that's different. So the thing is, I think that people just need to think bigger, mm. and, and, and you'll get there faster. Yeah, and you can't even think bigger until you get around bigger, yeah. like, I, to your point. And I think it's so dope is that understanding that it's enough money that hit him making money ain't taking away from you making money. Yeah. Mm. Because what, what, what you don't want to do is, get jealous yeah right? you had opportunity but hey man that's and he ain't on that. like no like somebody else's make uh money does not take away from yours what god put on this planet for you is yours yep. and we put on f- the planet for them is theirs so understand that somebody else making money doesn't take away from your pocket so that that creates this abundance mindset yep. around everybody and if you stay in that abundance mindset i think you get further i think so many people like are so many people suffer from the recession is because they accept it Oh wow! Dang, that's tough, right? So many people, like they say, are in recession. They're in recession. It, cre- it creates a scarcity mindset. And they accept it. I'm not accepting that we're in a recession. We are doing great, right? In my in my mind, I refuse to accept that type of negativity because I deserve to live in abundance. As Ash Casper say, abundance is your birthright, and I'm living in that. Can I ask this question though? Yes, sir. What if it is a recession though? If I think it just it deserves. Um, the respect of considering it, right? So, for instance, I mean, I don't think, I don't think Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos is like small thinking, mm-hmm. but they see something and they let mad people go. Yeah, that's crazy. They see something. Mm-hmm. What what I, what I would say is, I, and I know this for a fact because I study finance, I study the economy. Recessions are the time for people to make the most money mm. if you position yourself. So, here's a concept I want everybody to try to adopt. We've always been taught to have an emergency fund, right? The, the term emergency puts you in a scarcity mindset off the cuff. <laughs> it's an emergency fund, right? And I'm not saying anybody shouldn't have an emergency fund. You want to have your, 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 your basis covered. But what about having an opportunity fund? Mm-hmm. I like that. You're talking so, good. Right? So now you have money set aside to take advantage of an opportunity if it persists, mm-hmm. right? One of the things I love about hanging with Dion, Dion, I... Hanging around him, I find I, I, I stumble upon money. Like from a funding <laughs> standpoint, not twenty thousand this bank, fifty thousand. I'm just stacking my funding ability so that if a recession does happen, I have an opportunity fund and I'm able to take advantage of something versus being a victim of something. Okay, mm-hmm. I like it. I like mm-hmm. it. I like it. So it's not like you're closing your eyes saying it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You're saying it's not going to kill me. Come on. I'm ready for you. I'm ready yeah. for you. And I think we should be training. Like the be- like right now, if it is a recession, you should be doing everything you can to get information, to get knowledge, to get access to funds so that if it does happen, you can take advantage of it and not become a victim of it. So one of the things, reason we're getting together and we, uh, we'll t- talk about it more later, but we're giving people opportunity to tap in with us. I'm about to talk about it now. Talk about it now? Yeah, talk about it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we're doing uh, a challenge called Get the Back, Keep the Back Challenge, Right. It's going to be in January and we're going to teach people how to get as much, how to fix their credit, get as much funding as they possibly can. And I'm going to teach how to use that funding within their business to take advantage of opportunities, not just take advantage of opportunities, but take advantage of opportunities that also make them more money and help them save on taxes. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if we are, if we do have a recession approaching, I want you to have that opportunity fund ready. So you can be like, yo, that recession was the biggest opportunity that took me and my family from generational poverty to generational wealth. 